Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu anh was born seven years after the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He belonged to the Umayyah branch of the Quraysh tribe. The Umayyas were the most influential clan of the Quraysh. They were the strongest and wealthiest, and Uthman was their golden child and the most beloved. He was well liked by everyone in his clan, due to his good manners and shyness. Like his predecessor, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman was able to read and write. This was an unusual skill in pre-Islamic Arabia. He became a successful trader and cloth merchant. Throughout his life, he was known as a kind, generous man, and even before his conversion to Islam, he would freely give money to help those in need. He and Abu Bakr were close friends, and it was Abu Bakr who brought him to Islam when he was 34 years of age. Uthman formed a very close relationship with Prophet Muhammad, and he gained intricate knowledge about the religion of Islam. He narrated 146 traditions directly from the Prophet himself, and was one of the few people who were able to write down Qur'an. Some years later, he married the Prophet's second daughter, Ruqayya. In spite of his wealth and position, his relatives subjected him to torture because he had embraced Islam, and he was forced to immigrate to Abyssinia. Some time later, he returned to Mecca, but soon migrated to Medina with the other Muslims. In Medina, water was scarce, and control of the wells was tightly held by several men. Because he was a skillful trader and negotiator, Uthman set about trying to procure a well for the use of the Muslims. He negotiated a price for half a well. He would have control one day and the other owner the next day. However, Uthman gave his water to the Muslims freely, so nobody wanted to pay for the water on the alternate days. The original owner of the well had no choice but to sell his half of the well to Uthman who nevertheless paid a fair price for it. He continued to allow the water to be used freely by all and never reminded the people of his charity. He was humble and modest. In Medina, his business again began to flourish and he regained his former prosperity. Uthman's generosity had no limits. On various occasions, he spent a great portion of his wealth for the welfare of the Muslims, for charity and for equipping the Muslim armies. That is why he came to be known as Ghani, meaning generous. His wife Ruqayya was seriously ill just before the Battle of Badr, and he was excused by the Prophet wasallam from participating in the battle. The illness of Ruqayya proved fatal, leaving him deeply grieved. The Prophet was moved and offered him the hand of another of his daughters, Kulthum. Because he had the high privilege of having two daughters of the Prophet as wives, Uthman was known as the possessor of two lights. Uthman participated in the battles of Uhud and the Trench. After the encounter of the Trench, the Prophet ﷺ determined to perform Hajj, sent Uthman as his emissary to the Quraysh in Mecca. But the Quraysh detained him and started negotiating with the Prophet. The episode ended with a treaty with the Meccans known as the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The portrait we have of Uthman is of an unassuming, honest, mild, generous, and very kindly man, noted especially for his modesty and his pity. He often spent part of the night in prayer, fasted every second or third day, performed Hajj every year, and looked after the needy of the whole community. In spite of his wealth, he lived very simply and slept on bare sand in the courtyard of the Prophet's mosque. Uthman radiallahu anh knew the Qur'an from memory and had an intimate knowledge of the context and circumstances relating to each verse. During Uthman's rule, the characteristics of Abu Bakr's and Umar's caliphate, impartial justice for all, mild and humane policies, 
striving in the path of God and the expansion of Islam continued. Uthman's realm extended in the west to Morocco, in the east to Afghanistan, and in the north to Armenia and Azerbaijan. During his caliphate, a navy was organized, administrative divisions of the state were revised, and many public projects were expanded and completed. Uthman sent prominent companions of the Prophet wasallam as his personal deputies to various provinces to scrutinize the conduct of officials and the condition of the people. His most notable contribution to the religion of God was the compilation of a complete and authoritative text of the Qur'an. A large number of copies of this text were made and distributed all over the Muslim world. Uthman's caliphate lasted for 12 years. The first six years were marked by internal peace and tranquility. But during the second half of his caliphate, a rebellion aroused. The Jews and others, taking advantage of dissatisfaction among the people, began conspiring against the caliph. They started airing their complaints and grievances in the public. They gained so much sympathy that it became difficult to distinguish friend from foe. It may seem surprising that a ruler of such vast territories, whose armies were matchless, was unable to deal with these rebels. If Othman had wished, the rebellion could have been crushed at the very moment it began. But he was reluctant to be the first to shed the blood of Muslims, however rebellious they might be. He preferred to reason with them, to persuade them with kindness and generosity. He well remembered hearing the Prophet say, Once the sword is unsheathed among my followers, it will not be sheathed until the last day. The rebels demanded that he resign and quit from the post of Caliph. Even some of the other companions advised him to do so. He would gladly have followed this course of action, but again he was bound by a solemn pledge he had given to the Prophet. Perhaps God will cloth you with a shirt off, man, the Prophet had told him once. And if the people want you to take it off, do not take it off for them. One day, the rebels surrounded his house and they were planning to attack and kill him. It was then that Othman said to a well-wisher, God's messenger made a covenant with me and I shall show endurance in adhering to it. After a long siege, the rebels broke into Othman's house and murdered him. When the first assassin's sword struck Othman, he was reciting the verse, Verily, God sufficeth thee. He is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Othman breathed his last on the afternoon of a Friday, 17th of Hijjah, 35 after Hijrah. He was 84 years old. His love for God and his messenger kept him both strong and humble in the face of old age and extreme difficulties.